everyone. Look at that. Awesome. We make stuff happen. Um, Jordis or Patricia or Angela, whoever's doing that, can you also allow multiple participants to share screen? So Mark, I know you had a, a bunch of notes that you wanted to share. I'm not sure if you wanted to do that at this time or you wanted to kind of open it up um, and get everyone's kind of buy-in of, hey, what's important to you? And when you think luxury mastermind, what value can we provide to each other to help this thing grow and make it better? Sure. Let me just minimize my screen here for a moment. So again, my thought behind this was, when, when someone says luxury, what do you think of? What, how do you define luxury? So if anyone wants to join that, and then I've got some follow on to that. This is a mastermind. It's not intended to be a, a lecture or, or a training class. Looks like Josh is trying to connect audio. Thanks for joining us, Denny, Roseman, Kim, Kelly, Tony, Angela. Can you guys hear me? Sorry, I was getting on my computer. Yes. Sorry about that. The Minova house renovation, it's wrapping up. So that's what's going on here. L luxury, luxury. I, I love this because I think. Uh, Specifically in the Naples area, luxury is going to take a whole new meaning in the next five years, in the next two years. And I, I think we're going to see a degree of affluent people that we've never, ever seen before in, in this area. I honestly don't think we're ready for it. Um, obviously, I'd, I'd love for our name to get out there more so that people trust us more. And I think it's happening. I mean, KW Luxury as a whole, I don't just, I'm not talking about us, but um, I'm, I'm very excited. I like staying up to date. I, I try to follow everything luxury that I can uh, in our area, just because I know so many people are moving here. Uh, but when you have people dropping a tenth of their net worth buying condos uh, at uh, at the, the Four Seasons, where you could easily have three acres on 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 Gordon Drive, it's just I think we're just going to be a cash haven for savings accounts. And I, I don't think I don't think we realize just how much it's gonna change and how many high net worth affluent people are gonna to come to this area. So, I mean, as long as we can stay updated with everything and just have the, the, the concurrent conversations with everyone. Um, yeah, I mean, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the expert, but. So you said something interesting um, that like, hey, we're not ready. Do you mean like Naples isn't ready? The infrastructure is not ready? Keller Williams? No, no, no. I think Naples, in, like all I think of us? Naples, I think Naples and the infrastructure are ready. Okay. When I, when I think about it's, it's, it's probably either once a week or one, once a week or every two weeks that I see some article about something selling for tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars, commercial, residential, uh, I think that the infrastructure of Naples is ready, that all the people, the massive investors who have billions and billions of dollars who are doing things here kind of under the scenes that we're learning about months and months later, I think they're ready and they know what's happening in this area, but I don't think us as agents really understand just how much of a wealth transfer we're about to see. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm very excited for it. I think the more that we get out there and the more stats we show, the more successes that we share, uh, people are gonna trust us more and more and more. Uh, I mean, we have people who are moving their wealth around so fast, uh, looking for ways to just keep expanding upon it. Um, but I don't, I don't think, when I, when I talk to people about what I think the luxury market's gonna do here, a lot of people, maybe it's because of my age, but a lot of people kind of talk to me in disbelief. They don't really agree with what I'm saying. But I, th I, th I think it's an age thing um, because I, I think that our price points are getting so high by the, by the water. Everything's pushing out so much. I mean, if we look at everything that's happening in Ave Maria, all the townships, uh, everything that's happening off in Soto Boulevard, these people realize that the price points just going up so much by the water that families are getting pushed out farther into the middle of the state. 
Um, maybe that's just my take on it. So when we talk about a, a sort of a, a common denominator or a common understanding, um, I, I went back through the multiple listing and, and took a look and saw that the most expensive home that sold in the past year was 52 million. Wow. And the most expensive home that's ever sold in the Naples Marco Island area is also the same property for 52 million. Right now, the most active, the, the most expensive active condo is 17 million 500, and the most expensive condo that ever sold was 14 million 750. Yeah. So when we when we have that understanding of the high end of the market, then when someone asks what luxury is. Oftentimes the definition is we're in the either top five or 10% of the market is luxury or three times the median price. And Jeff put together a nice graphic that he shared with us. Um, Jeff, do you want to address what you've seen? If you're able to talk. Um, sorry, I'm not on camera, but um, I did send that graphic out and Heather is actually send it to an artist to make it a little bit more luxury but the idea is that we look at all sales over a million dollars um each month and and i had a bunch of data in there about list to sell price and new listings and all that the idea is to have something we can send out to our customers um on a regular basis identifying ourselves as experts in the luxury market that was my thinking and there's, I mean, when um, I'm just pulling up actually what Jeff had sent, which was really good. And this was comparing, um, you know, let's just go to Collier County and I could probably post it or share it. Um, but luxury sale, Collier County sales over a million. Um, certain, the overall was 1.55 million as an average. Single family was 1.53 million and condos was 1.6. So, that's you know your average in the in the luxury market, but then obviously we have those very high sales at fifty two million and seventeen million. But kind of segregating the luxury market into those because you can have uh, a million two house that you know like Josh was saying out in the estates that is a luxury home. It's a luxurious style. It has you know the pools, the cabanas, all those things in that you know upper million dollar range and then you can have the 17 million dollar condo on the on the waterfront so both are or the, or the 80 million dollar condo on the or the 8 million dollar condo <laughs> yeah Which, it, and that's what that's what makes me i just don't think we're ready because i mean and we you take it for you know you know for what it's worth so i know someone who's a contractor who knows a project manager for the four seasons project and they told them that tiger woods bought one of the penthouses it said for 80 million. I don't know if that's true or not, but if somebody like Tiger is willing to do that, it's just, I just don't, I think that's going to happen more and more and more uh, specifically, even just, I mean, those condos start at 10 million and they're all like, oh, it just blows my mind. And you can make all the changes you want after you buy it. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And I think as locals, we're like, you, you could have the world, but they don't know. So, I mean, for them, it's a, it's a good of blissful ignorance um and it'll be amazing i imagine but for 80 million dollars if you can imagine what you could get two miles down the road um i just think that people see us as uh, as a safe haven and i don't think that's going to change well and i i want to affirm what you're saying mark who was here just a couple weeks ago to shoot a video on luxury brady sandal yeah He's the head of Keller Williams Luxury, and where is he coming to shoot footage for luxury and luxury education right here in Naples? No, it's what I find interesting is that a lot could sell that doesn't have any water view for a million dollars in uh, somewhere in, in the coastal area, and that's not considered luxury any longer. That's mm -hmm. just considered sort of almost pedestrian. Yep. And so what, what I'm for, forecasting to see is we're going to see a lot more teardowns than we've ever seen before, that there is no available land to build new construction, that someone's going to have to buy up a lot and tear something down. Yeah. And that's what we're going to have to get adjusted to because the consumer is saying, I want new construction. And yet there's nothing available in new construction and luxury that's close to the water in, yep. in certain price points. Yep. It's gotta make it a premium, premium for land, really. Yeah.
I mean, if you take a, just take a drive down Creighton, you'll see all the teardowns, all the new construction that's going on there. It amazes me how fast I can drive by a billion dollars. I mean, it truly amazes me. Like when I think about it, it's 15 seconds of my time. Um, so I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. It's gonna be teardowns because people need to move money. A lot of people made a lot of money last year. And for them, they understand that cash in the bank is useless. And so they're going to dump it into property and somewhere where it's going to effectively keep inflating is here. I don't, I don't think, and Naples is becoming more and more um, pronounced across the country. So I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't see, I think it's a bubble. It's a protected night's bubble uh, here in Naples, at least for. So when you think about areas like Sarasota, for example, their architecture for, for many of their areas was built in the 1960s. And you see that when you drive through their area. Ours is more 80s, 90s, and 2000s. So when you, when you think about condominiums on the beach now, and, and I think Mark Island is pretty much the same, is that, that people are going to have to adjust their thinking that they're not going to find new construction on the beach that it's going to be something that has to be remodeled, something that was built in the 80s or 90s. So what are the resources that we can essentially tap into knowing that these are the trends going forward? What are the resources that we can tap into? And it's creating those relationships with builders and figuring out people's lifestyle because like Josh was saying, hey, Tiger Woods potentially bought this place for however many millions and what you can get right down the road in Gordon Drive um, or, you know, in Port Royal in one of these areas, you could get technically so much more, you know, maybe so much more house, so much more view, but they're choosing a four seasons type of place for the lifestyle. So how do we tap a little bit more into that lifestyle with um, our networks with different events and showing like, hey, we're part of that lifestyle too. So you can come to us for all of the resources for any lifestyle that you're looking for, whether it is golf, boating, that country club atmosphere and those exclusive places. I'd love to have someone from the Four Seasons come and talk about that lifestyle specifically so we're armed with knowledge. That's a really good idea. And maybe we can put some of those things on the schedule. I know that we were talking about um, getting some more of those videos done, whether it be at different houses um, for the other luxury events that are right here in right in our community, like the um, Cars on Fifth that's coming up really soon next month. You know, those are events that they're they're in our market anyway. We don't need to host these events to be able to tap into that market to say, hey, these are the events that are here. So we, if we can have that video crew kind of showcase not only the event, but us attending the event and what's that what that's doing for our clients and tapping into that. So I think it's a matter of getting these things, um, you know, besides the masterminds and saying, hey, how can we share and, and gain more clients and help our clients find houses and different things? How can we get those events on the schedule so that it's like, okay, you know, every month we know that these are the two things that we're going to do. Maybe it's as a, as a group, we're going to um, to Calusa Bay or, you know, some other new construction community to say, hey, we're here in numbers. Like, hey, can we come in, you know, 30 of us, 40 of us that we're all coming in and then someone's videoing that so we could share that footage. And now we have the knowledge of, of that project. And then if we do two projects a month or one project a month, just think about how much more knowledge we'll have over a six month period. And then once all those properties are gone, now they're resales. And we can effectively say when we go on those listing appointments, yes, I've been in every unit in this community. And this is why yours stands out. This is why yours is different. So then we have that real knowledge rather than, you know, just the, oh, your home's going to go in the Wall Street Journal and here and there and there, like everybody else says. I think that's a key point is to begin our collaboration, not only internally, but externally. Uh, know who the top luxury lo agents are locally. Have you met them? Or do you network with them? Uh, know your competition and then make sure that you understand who the dominant players are in a farm area. And then the next thing was, um, when was the last time you went to all the luxury developments? Do you know what their current strengths and weaknesses are? you know what, what new things have been done, what renovations have been done? 
Yeah, that's definitely a good idea. And, and collaborating with these agents, you know, not from a recruiting standpoint or a joint Keller Williams standpoint or anything like that, just like showing up to say, hey, I want to preview your listing. This may be a fit for my client or I may find a client in a month from now, but you're hosting this open house, so I'm going to show up. And then the hopes is that they're going to show up when you do the same thing. And we're, so we're working together in the market. And then should they be a good fit down the road? Great. But that's not the purpose of the event. Right. You know, right. it's a byproduct. I love that. I remember er early on in my career before I joined Keller Williams, there was a top agent at Coldwell Banker and there were the, probably a hundred agents of the company at the time. And then he would go on a listing appointment and someone would mention another agent's name and he said, no, I never heard of them. And, and so you don't, so by attending these events and participating, you get, we get our presence there and people know who we are. Um, go either to their open houses, even if even it's not a broker open house, um, they're captive there sometimes on weekends if they're holding their own open house. Um, and there may not be that many people from one to three. So you can't be, unless you, unless they invite you to leave, there's an opportunity for you to, to, to begin a dialogue with someone and get to know them better. Yeah, sure. I like, and I, it's, uh, I know that we teach social media all the time and we beat it like a dead horse, but I have there's luxury agents that follow me who do more than we do, but they accolade me. I, I'm, I met, I showed a, a house um, in Riverstone not too long ago and, and the agent was just pouring all this positivity into me. All they do is follow me on Facebook. So that's, I mean, it's the byproduct of trying to grow that, you know, with the, within our office and we talk about it all the time, but I, I humbly agree. It's all about getting out in the community as much as we can, learning what we can, and then showing people that we are here in a very active sense uh, and our office is growing exponentially. I mean, the things that we're doing, I, I, I don't think I ever would have, would have, would have thought about it when I, when I first got my license and I've, I'm blessed to have made that decision. Um, so, so Denny, uh, can you, if you can hear me, Denny, can you tell us about a listing that you have a luxury listing? I think you've got one in Naples or Tony. I think, uh, actually John has it. He just listed it. In, um, um, okay. I don't think John's on though, is he? Is it the one in Pine Ridge Estates? Yes. Okay, Ridge, uh, I previewed yeah. it before it yeah. was staged. You guys were waiting for the staging furniture. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice home. I know had John had mentioned on the last call that maybe we could host like a small event or something there. Are they is that seller still trying to keep that pretty private or now that it's open on the market, it's it's okay to kind of advertise that and do different things at that property? Uh, that would be John's call. The yeah, his seller, his seller didn't even want it on the MLS in the beginning. And so we'll have to ask John as far as if he's been a little bit more open to that now. Yep, that's what he was telling me as well um, before it was, was on the market. But now that maybe it's on and the address is published, who knows? Um, but maybe we can find, I know Heather had mentioned one um, that she had either coming up or it already came up that is on the water. So we could potentially get some other, pull some other resources, maybe some cars and boats and, you know, different things to, to create these little events. And then um, Josh can help us with getting it out there as far as like the social media presence and hey, okay, we're going to do this one thing, this small thing. You had done something the other day where you previewed new construction and you're like, hey, let me just tell you about it. And it was such a simple post, but it was so awesome. And it was like, wow, that probably took you an hour of your time to walk through there, maybe even less, take a couple of pictures and share it. But it becomes a resource for that particular community or for, for luxury in that area. So the more um, material we can kind of collaborate and just get things on the schedule and then share it, I think that in and of itself will, will start to gain momentum. Yeah, active agents are successful agents, right? Uh, the more that we do, and this is what we tell to our team all the time, if we can get people, and maybe it's more difficult now, but previewing new construction, new communities once or twice a week, a, it makes you look like the expert. B, you know what's going on. And C, you have content specifically for us to use on social media. Funny story about previewing that new construction up in Ardenia. I got a buy sell lead literally from being there. And it's just like go out and talk to people. And I think the, the more that we're out there, I mean, we're just going in circles here, but the more that we're out doing things, it's the law of large numbers in so many different ways. We're just going to produce business. So as we go forward, um, let's think about what do luxury clients, what are they looking for from us as agents? 
they want me to agree with them that the market's about to drop. <laughs> and that is my biggest, that's one of my biggest hurdles uh, for people who have, I'm talking people who have more than 25 million. Um, it is hard for me to convince them of what I believe. And that's that we're, we're not, I mean, we're still trending up uh, and it's, it's still hindsight. I mean, that's another story, but no, you're right. Like, what do they want to see? Josh, you've got to live through an airplane crash. And you won't feel like that anymore. How do you mean? Because you know, obviously you're younger than me and I've seen the ups and downs and it cannot continue. It cannot. It's totally impossible. Oh, no, I humbly agree. I humbly agree. I think, I mean, without getting into deep theory, I don't mean, about what the dollar is going to do and whatnot. But I, I think it's, yeah, it's un, it's unsustainable, 100%. But what, I mean, what's it going to do? Everybody thought it was going to crash last year. So maybe some conversations around those those predictions and, and pulling in experts, because that's really what the clients are looking for. And in the luxury market, you can't say, well, now's a good time to buy because the interest rates are low because they're buying cash. They don't care about what the interest rates are. Um, so it's just totally different conversations as far as those predictions and what that looks like. And like you were saying, Naples is a, it's a safe haven for people because we don't have these over leveraged properties like you do in some of the other luxury markets nationwide. So so things don't fall potentially as quickly or change as much because the properties aren't over leveraged. So it's not a big foreclosure market or bank owns or, you know, any short sales, things like that um, in that, in that luxury space. So what the clients that are buying like that recent sale, the 52 million, I would love to know like, Hey, why did they buy that? And why did they buy it now versus wait for the, the market to fall out maybe in a year from now or five years from now, because no one knows exactly when, why, why did they buy it now? And what was their motivation behind it? And how do we find more clients that have that same motivation? Yeah, well, their 52 million was in the stock market. And they know that real estate is going to drop less than the market. Jenny, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, think, it, um, I don't, I don't think it's always dollars and cents so with a lot of these buyers, especially this higher end. And I apologize, guys. I'm been isolated in my garage with with COVID, so this, this, is, this has been my domain. But you know, I, I think the buyers, you know, especially the waterfront buyer, I mean, it's lifestyle. And I think with what's happened, you know, it's put a lot of things in perspective to a lot of people. And that's you get this mass exodus moving down here, and it's not all dollars and cents. It's you know, how long are you going to wait to start this lifestyle? And I think the more when you guys hit on that, I mean, that's why people move here. Granted, some of it's perception. But they've got this image in their head that my life is going to be like this when I'm able to move down to Florida. Um, and I think that's market goes up or down, you know, Naples is unique that I mean, that's that's what we really have to hit home. And whatever that niche is, if it's golf, if it's waterfront, if it's shopping, if it's arts, I think really becoming a, you know, a master or whatever, you know, a couple niches. And that's why they move here. You know, money wants to be around money because it kind of protects their investment. But, you know, I, th I think it's all lifestyle. You're right. Danny, you and Kristen have, have uh, a perspective of many multiple markets. What are you seeing uh, in other luxury markets? Well, again, defining luxury is a key. I know you've been tempted to talk about that. And the interesting thing is, and you guys were just talking a minute ago about having speakers come in and, and talk about the market. Well, the challenge with that is, and that can be a, a great kind of a fun thing to do, but everybody wants to know one thing, what's going to happen next? And no one can tell them. So, I mean, everyone has an opinion of what's going to happen next. So really, here's the, here's the bottom line for me in Southwest Florida, if you don't mind me giving you my opinion. Um, and it is just my opinion. I've been saying for the last 25 years when I've been talking at Market Watch, one of the one of the transactions I brought up in August was this one here. You talk about this lot, which you probably are familiar with, was on on the market for like five years for thirteen point nine million dollars off Gordon, and the guy paid full price for it and put it back on the market a couple of days later and sold it for uh, eighteen point nine million, five million dollars more. I mean, I've, what's going on? What, the interesting thing about that is somebody has that kind of perspective or. That, that lot sat there for five years at 13.9. Somebody picks it up and then 20 days later sells it for $5 million more. Pretty interesting. So here, here's my two cents worth and, and you can take it for what it's worth. 
I agree with Josh and the rest of you guys that we can be a, a, a bastion and we can we can fare better than most areas if we re, if we re, if we acknowledge what we are and we don't let people change it. I, I've been saying for 25 years, the three things people are coming here for is water, warmth, and way of life. Now, there's a lot of water around the world. There's a lot of warmth around the world, but way of life is becoming more rare. And the example that I use is Ruth Chris. I love that. Um, uh, Kristen, I love that steakhouse. And, you know, you can get pretty good steaks there, good service, blah, blah, blah. However, if somebody wanted to turn it in, say, well, you know what? Why don't we grow our market? You know, we're, we're kind of a changing population. Why don't we have a, a pizza section and maybe we'll have a salad bar and maybe we'll have a sushi uh, chef in there as well. Well, it would be, be a restaurant, but it would not be Ruth Chris. And so for me, and again, this is my opinion. So please, on, I mean, I'm, that's it. I won't say anymore. We need, a, we need to hold the line that brings people here. We need to be very concerned about what people are teaching in the schools. We need to be very concerned about what we do with our police force. We need to have the best education, the best, uh, the best police force, the best, you know, the taking care of our environment of anywhere. Now, other people can get woke if they want to. I'm saying no woke here. Because if we can continue that, we will have a bastion that everyone would want to be at, only because they want to come to Ruth Chris. Now, that doesn't mean Ruth Chris is right. That just means that's what we've been serving up. That's our differential advantage. And so that I know that doesn't have anything to do with us attracting business, although just from a philosophical standpoint, I believe, and this is what I wanted to say at Market Watch, although I, I couldn't say it the way I wanted it to, I would encourage everyone that has any influence with, with people who have influence, particularly the mothers, that we hold the line in our schools. I believe if we can keep our schools in the right direction, our market will flourish. And like Josh says, I think we'll be insulated from the rest of the chaos. So I'm getting off my soapbox on that. So I don't think I answered your question, Mark, but I really believe even if we're the only place in the, in the state of Florida that maintains that, by golly, this will be the place to live. This will be the place to work. So historically, our feeder markets, uh, everyone oftentimes thinks that um, it's the North. It's, well, first, they used to think it was only the Midwest. And then we added the Northeast. And when you look at the actual numbers from the US Census Bureau, the largest number of people migrating to Collier County is coming from Miami-Dade and second is Broward. So we oftentimes think the grass is greener someplace it's a distant area away, but it can sometimes be in our, in our own backyard. And then the other feeder markets historically have been, if people are looking at Naples and Marco Island, they're likely also looking at Sarasota, Vero Beach, Stewart, Jupiter. And so those are, those are also indicators of what's happening in their market and how it, it may impact our market. And oftentimes we might be the last place that they come to. If they're coming down from Toronto and they're coming down 75, they're hitting Clearwater and Tampa and St. Petersburg and Sarasota. And, and we're sort of like the last end of the train on the West Coast. And then if they're coming down from, from New York or New Jersey, they're hitting Vero Beach and Stewart and Jupiter and Palm Beach, et cetera. And then they might come across I-75 and pick up Naples and Marco Island. So those are the ones that I watch see what's happening in their market. And I wonder what other ones that you all think are, are feeder markets for us. Certainly there are people in other parts of the country, but my experience is there are fewer people that are coming. You know, When you look at, at people and they say, well, the top number one destination or luxury sales are happening in California, and Denny, maybe you can speak to this, is that many of those people over the last decade came from abroad, they came from Asia or someplace in the Pacific region. Uh, those people weren't necessarily coming to Southwest Florida also. So you can, you know, you, I think it's, it's smart to put your, your investment of your time and energy into those feeder markets where they're most likely to be coming from instead of trying to hit the entire world. Yeah, 100%. I mean, not to echo what Denny said. I think, that, I think there's a lot of food for thought when you're talking about Denny. Um, and not even on a personal level, but if we want to, like you said, maintain what we have here, there's, there's a reason people are coming here. We just sold a listing in Oaks. Um, first offer we got, it was on the market. I, it sold for $250,000 more than I thought it would sell for. The buyers, sight unseen from Washington State. 
It was an Asian family, just like you're saying, Mark. And I mean, they came in, they saw it, or it was a virtual showing. It was Redfin agent actually, but it's just exactly what you're saying there. But it's just like what Denny was saying, they, they had never been to Naples. They had never been, and they spent two and a half million dollars on a house. And I mean, it just uh, just goes to show you they're coming for something more than like what you're saying, more than just to be around money. It's it's lifestyle. It's whatever they see in the Naples area, and we have to be good. That's why we we hammer uh, lifestyle uh, in our posting because if we're able to share our life here, uh, that that authentic lifestyle, because we have such a big reach on on social media people are able to see that. So I think there's it's 25 different parts. And so what brings people to Naples? And it's, oh. go ahead. Please go ahead. I mean, I know that everyone always says, oh, you don't talk religion, you don't talk politics, you don't talk all of these things. But one of the reasons why Naples is growing so much and so much wealth is coming here is because of the political environment in a lot of other places. People don't want their children to be taught, like Denny was saying, wokeness in schools or you know any of this other stuff. So I'm not saying we need to highlight that as a company, but you know that is part of the lifestyle that people are looking for. Well, when tra uh, that's well said. When we travel, Mark, about Christian and I around the country, and people, all, I used to say, "Well, I, where are you from? I'm from Fort Myers or Naples." Now I just say Naples. Every everywhere we go, there's only one one thing that trumps Naples. Anyone want to guess what it is? Alaska. Yeah. Florida. No, it's Alaska. It's so Alaska. when my wife says I'm from Alaska, they say, "Oh." I always wanted to go to Alaska. However, Naples is on the map, you guys, and we don't have to worry about attracting foreign uh, foreign uh, buyers into Naples. There's, they are, when you look at the growth, and this is hard for you to read on a slide, but I did, this is one of the slides I used in August. This is through August. We had, we had uh, 179 closed transactions compared to 135 as of August, plus 20 pendings. And that, that's up 50%, and that's only halfway through the year. What's interesting about the way our markets are gone, and we know that 2021 was a record market, right? It's also an inverted market. The upper end is growing faster than the lower end, which has never happened before. Generally, more price sensitive things are going and selling more of, I mean, uh, faster, right? And what people are doing is that in Philadelphia, Chicago, Boston, you name it, I mean, we're, Naples is still cheap. And so they're dropping big bucks and the values there. And so if we can just keep our, our store windows shiny and you know the lifestyle, when you think of lifestyle, you know, the only thing I'd say, Josh, is yeah, everyone's got golf and you know, you got all that. It's it's the way of life where you can walk outside, go get a paper and walk your kids. You don't have to worry about somebody smashing or grabbing your car. That's the type of way of life that I think we need to maintain. And strange enough. Well, anyway, so I just think that we, whatever we can do to preserve that um, will help us in the long run. And just the more I travel, people have Naples on their radar. It's so, true. I, 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 think, I think one thing, you know, to keep in mind, too, if someone really wants to expand, you know, the luxury, the, their, their luxury market is, you know, the luxury market's expanding. I mean, you look at, you know, it's like, we're jo like Lake Park, Josh. You know, there's areas that weren't luxury a year ago, year and a half ago. Now it's it's luxury. So I think that's that's the benefit of what's happening now, too, is. There's only so much Naples and with all these people coming in, we're, we're a small area, like a really small area for like Chicago and all these areas and, and, you know, the West Coast of the United States looking at us. We're we don't have that much room. So I think if you can kind of position yourself say like a Lake Park is a good example. You know, it's across from old Naples, but that's all gonna be luxury if it isn't already right now, you know, saving yep. over a million. So I think that's, I think if you can kind of almost position yourself where, you know, there's maybe not somewhat as rooted competition, um, knowing where it's going, um, not a bad idea as well. Yeah. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head with Lake Park. So we're renting in there right now. We just have this house that we're modeling. But the two houses next to us tear, tore, tore down, both of them. Uh, the one right next door was $750,000 purchase, and they just tore the house down. Same with the one next door. They're building a, a mega mansion on two lots in Lake Park. 
it's 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 easily going to be a three and a half million dollar home but that's lake park a year and a half ago you could have got a, a tear down for 450 and it's not it's uh those, those, we have to find those kind of neighborhoods you're exactly right which is why um but i think, I think you look at any any of the, any of the acreage property you know say you know west of 75 every single one of them is going to be luxury yep that's a lot of property Hey Zach, hey Zach, uh, I trust you're feeling better. Listen, could you maybe turn your camera around? I'm going to see the slot under the door where they slide your tray. You know, when it comes time <laughs> to feed you. I, I I wish I had that service. <laughs> so hey Mark, one more point here, and I'm I'm, I'm sorry I'm monopolizing your microphone. Here uh, the bold coach is going to come out of me now, and you guys. <clears throat> Uh, I guess here's the issue. I, you know, everyone wants to be Bill Earl, right? Yeah, he spent 20 or 30 or 40 years developing his relationships. You guys can know everything about everything when it comes to luxury and be poor as crap because everything's about the relationship you have with people. So the conversation at some point in time is how are we going to get in conversation and relationship with people? Because we have the relationship, we have the sales. So how do we do that in luxury? And if we have anybody on Marco Island, we'd be happy to have your perspective on this as well. Hey guys, this is Amber. Sorry, I had to hop in the car. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, our guest the last week of the month, Alexander Brandau, he is from Nashville. And you are absolutely right, Jenny. That's the conversation of that training. I've seen him give it before and it's basically how do you increase your circle the people that you're around with and he has a systematic way where he came into Nashville and increased his influence with the affluent so make sure you're there the last week of the month uh for Alexander Brandon on that is he coming into the market center Amber no he'll be zooming okay yeah he's great I'm I'm friends with him he's really great I think how we get into conversation with more people that, you know, that are part of that lifestyle is what does your lifestyle look like? You know, like in Lake Park, the lifestyle is, hey, you can still bike to the beach. You're close to things. There's a Lake Park diner. There's that whole sense of community there. Michelle, your thing is, is horses and the bigger properties and that type of community. So if we're focusing on like, hey, what do we, what do we like to do as individuals? And I'll kind of say like, I don't golf. I don't really know anything about golf. My dad golfs. Anytime I have a golf client, I either phone a friend or say, hey dad, what, what is this about? this and what is the five things I need to know but it's, it's really not my specialty so if we can all kind of figure out hey what do we what do we like here I mean Marco Island boating is huge most of the agents there I mean you have to know all the waterways the depths of the boats all these different things and have that knowledge in order to you know be able to service those clients and have that relationship with them um, because they want to know not only what size boat can I get here but what restaurants can I go to where do I fish all these different things so kind of collaborating those resources so then we could share with each other and all be in the know when we get those clients i mean i thought i had you know it's always been about knowing the inventory and just knowing you know whatever that niche is if it's you know equestrian or waterfronts and knowing the canals but you know if you guys you know want to do certain things to get out and see inventory um be able to use stuff like promote social media type stuff you know i, I just had a thought you know where it's you know we do a, an afternoon like preview you know i, I could pick people up by boat I think I can hold like 12, 15 people on my boat and just go, you know, go see those properties by water. Those type of perspectives, it's so different than if you ever come by shore, things like that. But it's, those are the kind of things we can start talking about access going out, things like that. Or if it's, you know, Michelle, you can share equestrian stuff with us about acreage. Like what do horse people talk about? What do they need? What, you know, but I mean, if we start doing stuff like that as a group, and if there's, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty avid golfer, but if, if there's golfers that can share, I mean, it's those kind of things uh, that'll open it up. So Denny, what I heard you say was that you felt it was important that we figure out the, the key to networking and meeting more people in the community, uh, or maybe perhaps people who are planning to come to the community. Do you have any thoughts on how we best do that? Do we, do we, do we, um, 
take the focus of these masterminds and drill down in that subject matter deep in the beginning and then address some of these other things? Or are we going to work on things simultaneously? I, I really, I don't think anything happens to have a customer. And so I think going back and get this as a bold coach to me and Amber can second this if she wants to, it's, are you lead generating for the type of clients you want? I mean, the, the orthopedic surgeon is going to operate on a knee of a, somebody who is a, has a $500,000 net worth or a 500 million net worth. It's the same procedure. Mm -hmm. So let's not overthink it. This is about making contact. So for example, Zach's a big fish. His family comes from fishing. If you're going to, you want to catch a $3 million uh, buyer, then you maybe you can do some farming, open houses uh, and, and geographic farming. Everything works in a luxury market um, that works in another market. And you have to tweak it just a little bit, right? Um, and I think those are the things. Are you are you at putting those in your daily plan? Are you making your contacts? Are you, you know, farming, for example, takes a little bit of time, but how, are you are you are you daily working on it as, as a plan? An open house, other than just throwing up a, a sign in a balloon that's basically not even hanging straight up anymore. I mean, there's more to it. And so um, <clears throat> there's a lot of buyers out there ch uh, chasing property. Um, can you, uh, one of the things we're working on now, Mark, is um, I've, I've got, uh, I think in the next week or so, uh, meet with Hannity to redo my radio spot for the golden seller and the golden buyer program. Because there's buyers out there, the golden buyer, they, they're willing to buy and then they don't want to move in right away. John has one buyer willing to uh, give the seller two years to stay in the house if they can find the right house. So there's all kinds of things we can do Everything works if you do it and nothing works if you don't. So I just think other than like learning stuff about luxury, you should be talking to people who can buy luxury. So maybe we could use these masterminds as an accountability group as well and, and each set our goals and share what those goals are. Hey, these are my sales goals for the year. This is how many calls and contacts I'm going to make similar to, to a bold environment and use these weekly collaborations as you know getting out there and getting out there in the community, but then holding each other accountable and then sharing with each other. Hey, I have these three buyers and these, this is what they're looking for. So then maybe someone else can jump on and say, well, you don't have the time to, to call that neighborhood, Michelle, but, but I can call that neighborhood neighborhood or, you know, may I have this client here so we can help each other, you know, not only gain more clients, but keep up with those prospecting activities. So we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, and Michael, Michael Burke, you're there. Uh, Kathy, anybody, Kim, anybody else want to ask a question or offer an opinion? I'm going to um, jump on something kind of backing on to what Danny just said a minute ago. You guys have always got to remember as well that our vendors here, so when Amber said about Alexander coming down, I've actually got a designer, very good designer friend here. Of course, I was in that industry a long time ago who does all Port Royal stuff here. She's, she has an office in Nashville as well. And I connected Alexander and her up in Nashville because I knew, you know, I met Alexander at one of the events and I knew she was up there. So remember that a lot of, not only do we have snowbird residents down here, we've got snowbird vendors like that, that designers that fly back and forward with people. And those are great networking people. And, um, you know, crazy as it might seem, a lot of those equestrian people are snowbirds and bring their horses down here as well. They don't necessarily live on horses communities, but I've been a resource to many of them to find them high end barns for their horses for three months when they come down here. So it's not just the people themselves. It's who else connects with them that, that, that do both things in both places as well. That's been a big one for me. Good point. So I think now it's just a matter of getting into action and what can we what can we get on the schedule? What do you guys want to see first um, of all the ideas that we talked about from from voting to new construction to this to that? You know, I, I would say if we can get everyone on the, these calls on an email and share what our goals are and what we want to hit on a an annual basis and a, a monthly basis, we could use it as accountability. And then what events do you want to see first? Because I think just getting that first event or saying, hey, let's meet at this new construction community 
community that I've been wanting to tour um, will be able to propel us forward. And what will give us the greatest or the maximum results? So th there's a, there are a lot of great ideas. And I uh, like what Denny had to say was to try and get our, our mindset and our focus on developing relationships. Is that something that you teach, Denny? Well, Brady does a good job of that. And of course, we all have our own form of that. Um, you know, um, <clears throat> just ask yourself, what do potential buyers want? Uh, there's, there's a ton of people that would love more information and about Naples. And the, the question I guess I would ask, and this is for my team too, okay, I've got a Naples team uh, and we're, we're attempting to grow. How many conversations can we have? And you know what? You already know more than most people do about Naples and you'll never know it all. So quit learning and start talking to people. Now, some of these events, you know, what, what can we do to invite clients to? What, what would be awesome? You know, uh, we do reverse, uh, Amber, her, I don't know if she's still on, but we teach the reverse bold 100. Her and her husband came up with that idea. What would be awesome if there was a box seats at the Philharmonic or something like that we can contribute and you know purchase and we have some sort of giveaway? Is that hokey for it for you know luxury people? Listen, when we had Pi Day in Fort Myers, we had people drive from Naples to Fort Myers for a twelve dollar Costco pie. You think they would like winning five hundred dollar uh, ticket you know box seats to some for some great uh, uh, presentation of some sort? or a great wine dinner or something. I mean, what can we do together in order to create conversations? And Amber's the perfect person to talk to about that. Are you still there? Probably not. So, so, so you've got the car show coming up in February. That's a huge draw for, for affluent people. And if we can figure out a way to have a space there uh, uh, just to, or just to go as a group and talk to some of these people. There's a billion dollars worth of cars lined up there, and it's really a nice event. And um, I was just thinking maybe that might be a place to look for. Is there a way that we could buy? A, they sell space there. We can buy a VIP space and put up a chair, and they can have it. We have a little waiter for them and something like that. You can you can go into one of the restaurants that are that line there and 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 get a space. I mean, I, we'd have to start working on it sooner than later, but but that that's a way to do it is to to get a space and just you know kind of keep it for ten or twelve people, and then in, you can invite people and they, it it's a it's kind of a drop by chat for a while, go look at the cars, come back, but you could have some food service and maybe some beverages. Give Jordan a reason to buy another car. I think he's gone. Well, my idea, Jeff, was that we wouldn't be us there. We, we would we would create some, we'd get pull our money together, then we'll have kind of that. That's our giveaway. How would you like to be part of the VIP experience at the car show? We have a private section for you at the restaurant, whatever. And people yeah. call us and we enter, then we, you know, then we can all come by and say hello. But however, but they win that space. Yeah. It's a ticketed event, so we can get tickets and hand them out as, as a as a giveaway. They they they've stopped just letting everybody in. I got it. Yeah, is that a Mercado? No, it's downtown on Fifth. Okay, they take the whole Fifth Avenue all the way down to Third Street, and and it's all cars, and it's pretty impressive. It's February fifth. February fifth. Mm-hmm. So Jeff, are you saying get some sort of space um, like in a restaurant for the, the day, you mean like a big table or? Yeah, I have to do a little bit of research. Um, when I was working at Angle and Volkers, that was a huge thing because we had people in the, in the, in the, in the building in, the, in our office and it was just a huge draw. But I think you could may, maybe do the same thing at one of the restaurants. One, you know, maybe, um, I don't know, I'd have to go and look, but the restaurants have spaces and it's, it's all kind of everybody walks in and maybe you could get one of the restaurants. I'm thinking over by the, um, the Inn on Fifth, there's a couple of restaurants over there that kind of open onto that corridor. Maybe we could get some space there 
uh, where people could come and pick up some uh, hors d'oeuvres or beverage or something like that. I could look into that. Jay from our team um, is one of the head waiters at True Locks. I can reach out to him. I know he's going in tonight. Okay. Um, I can see if, you know, maybe there's something that they could do as well, because they even have those nice spaces um, in there that they kind of close off for private rooms. So maybe something like yep. that, what would it be? And something like that where we can isolate a little bit, but not a lot, and people can drop by, go and look at the cars, come back. I mean, that's that's a huge event, and it's really a great place to just be in touch with people that are, you know, luxury buyers. Hob, Hobnob, um, Hobnob has that great big table that sits right on the window. Well, that's true. The Hobnob restaurant. Yeah. So we would have to think about how to get the word out to the right people. Um, it's not going to be your entire database. It's going to be those people who, number one, are willing to pay for a ticket to attend. And number two, um, the, the target market that we're trying to reach. I think we give the tickets away, Mark. I don't, I don't think they're very expensive. I think it's just to limit the access. And if there's a charity that's associated with it? St. Matthew's House. Yeah. So that's- That's, that's the where the proceeds, the proceeds from the ticket sales go to, say, go to a charity. I, I, I think you're probably right. But they, they may vary it, but there's a guy that runs the uh, Fifth Avenue Merchants group that I know I could reach out to him and see see if he could give me some ideas. That would be great if you could use that connection. Okay. So in the last two minutes that we have left, is there anything else that someone would like to suggest that we do in our future sessions? We started out by saying that the first Friday of the month uh, at this time, we would do a, a luxury learning series and that, this, that the fourth Friday of the month, we would do a mastermind that would be um, to open to the earned in agents so that, so that they have an opportunity not to necessarily hear the, the brand new information or not the brand new, the information that we would teach to new agents, but more so of, of mastermind at a higher level. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? I think it's just being transparent. You know, if, if someone's having luck, you know, it, like Denny said, you know, it's, it's, there's no difference. You know, if you go after San Carlos Park or Lake Park or these others, it's, it's just focus and time and, 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 and effort. And if people are having luck going after that and really focusing on it, I think it's just sharing what they're doing and being transparent because it's, if, if you do it in one market, you can do it in another. Well, it's Marissa, three o'clock and I appreciate everybody's participation. Look and Marissa, forward to I'm sorry, Mark. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Marissa, will you, can I hire your child? I would like to do a postcard campaign with. <laughs> do you want to be a postcard model? <laughs> He's a good conversation topic. I, I always talk to people. I mean, I live right here, so I, I'll walk through um, Pelican Bay in different neighborhoods. And, and he really is a good, he, he beats a puppy on conversation starter. That's for sure. Uh, he is a model. That's for sure. He does have the, he has a mom, hair of a model. For sure. Yes, he does. <laughs> he is adorable. The, uh, puppy Before we go, I have, I have one question. We had the people from the Naples Beach Club here and they agreed to send some material out. And I'm not sure if that got distributed, but if you wanna talk about the lifestyle of that resort, there's quite a bit of information in there on what you get for a $20 million condo. And it's very exclusive. There's a lot of areas in there that are reserved just for owners. And you, know, you talk about the Four Seasons lifestyle. So if you didn't get that, I'll be happy to send it out. I didn't receive it. Yeah, same here. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. I thought he distributed it to everybody that gave him a card, but I'll send it out to the group. Um, it really is a cool read. You know, if you buy a, a condo, you get very limited access to a lot of amenities, which is why I think it's so affluent is because I know if I go there, I'm going to have a lot of amenities that nobody else can access but owners on that property. 
maybe should everyone just type their email in the chat so we know that we are all on the same page with receiving those materials and then I we can send a follow up with who's going to contact you as far as getting that first event in place for cars on fifth. Okay, I'll give that gentleman a call um, probably Monday and I see if Jordan I can't can get some information. The, I think Jordis has the list of all the email addresses for everyone. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mark, for a great session. It's been very, very you did a great Thank job. You, Thank you, Marissa. Thanks, Mark. Mark. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, bye-bye.